Mama, we presented live on the internet, you know, the chat room's watching our show. Mama, there are audience, and now it's time for Jupiter at night. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Space Wednesday episode of Jupiter at Night. My name is Jeremy. And my name is Heather. Joining us again, Heather, also known as Mars Base. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking about spin-off technology. Now, what is a spin-off? Technically, uh, can you go ahead and define it there for us, Mars? Yeah. And a spin-off is a technology that has been commercialized. Uh, tonight, we'll be focusing on NASA because we want to talk about space. So it's commercialized through NASA's uh, by funding, research, licensing, facilities, assistance. So it could be something that NASA created for space and then found a way to use that technology on Earth. Or it could be that somebody had a technology and they sort of gave it an upgrade through research in upgrade. space. Now, you pointed me out to this incredible site. Uh, it's really a lot of fun to, to look at. Oh, uh, yeah. There's also a link in our, in our show notes if you want to check this out. But basically, it can take you on a tour of your house and point out yep. different uh, household objects that were actually either uh, invented for the space program or are spinoffs from the from the space program. Yeah, y you'd be surprised probably to see just exactly oh toilets, really? Oh sewage treatment. Okay. Yeah, uh, sewage treatment. There are so many. Our lives. Oh yeah. Are actually space shuttles really? <laughs> Space shuttles on Earth. Earth is a giant space shuttle. Now, before we get into the ones that are actual spinoffs, though, uh, you yep. had a few interesting in ones in here. I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't know this, but some of the most commonly thought of as, yep. you know, they invented this to go on the space shuttle are actually wrong. Yep. These are, like, the big ones. Tang, Tang Teflon, Teflon, and, and Velcro. Velcro. I mean, those they, are, like, people when you think that, about... NASA invented that. Yeah. But, but no, no the, Tang was invented by... Uh, Jer General Foods in 57, you know, mm -hmm. um, hit the shelves in 59. And then 62 is when it got its big publicity, essentially when, you know, John Glenn had a whole bunch of eating experiments in space and Tang was one of the things that... Eating, you know, they experiments, were eating well, experiments in space sounded like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, kind <laughs> of. It was all about, well, you can't make crumbs, you can't make mess. So it's what kind of foods can we have in a tiny little something? Mm. And then be able to still be able to eat it or whatever and the teflon was actually yep. invented as to like go on the front of the space shuttles uh no it was invented uh, for heat shields yeah uh, well it was applied to uh heat shields the technology but it was mm. invented by somebody else and they saw that and they applied it uh to heat shields and spacesuits and cargo hold liners and all sorts of different things and uh, the big one, Velcro. Vel I mean, we actually, yep. we actually even mentioned that I think on the show last night when we were talking yep. about the episode tonight. Yeah, I was Velcro thinking. Velcro was I, not made for him. No, it was a Swiss inventor back in the 1940s. That was crazy. And it was Swiss. just the association with the space program. You know, it just became you know hand in hand. Everyone said you know sees Velcro and everything because you know in, with giant spacesuit gloves, it's hard to d attach or unattach anything. And Velcro was just real easy, stick on stick. Yeah, I'd love to have just a Velcro lined house to be honest. That would be yeah, really just stick handy. whatever you want on your wall. <laughs> Set it and forget about it. Now, you pointed out uh, yeah. another really great, and in addition to that website that I showed you, you mm -hmm. guys earlier, there's also actually an app for Android yep. phones that can show you all these different uh, spinoff oh, technologies. Yeah. So uh, this is not an, an, a new subject. Everybody's interested in this, it seems oh, like. Oh, yeah. And why wouldn't you be? Well, yeah. The fact I mean, that space has such a great uh, influence on our, on our everyday lives is, yeah. is fascinating. Oh, yeah, and then NASA wants to show this about it because they want to tell the public, you know, these are the kind of things we do. Sure, you know about Hubble Space Telescope and you know about, you know, sh you know astronauts on the shuttle, mm -hmm. but do you know what we've had an effect on your lives? Basically, it's not all about just going to the moon or checking out distant planets and, no. and stars and stuff. It's actually improving yeah. our way of life as we go yeah. along. Oh, and yeah. That's, that's awesome. Now, Mars, yes. tell me about Optimus Prime. The uh, There is the... Optimus Prime Spinoff Award. It is real from NASA. Um, you know, it's this idea that Optimus Prime began in space, transformed himself, and came to Earth in order 
you know, and goes undetected, helping people and protecting them. So that's kind of what they think of like space technology. It started off in space. It kind of transforms in some way, comes down to Earth and help, you know, and it, it affects our lives without us knowing. There is an awesome video on YouTube. Actually without, made by NASA. Made by NASA. It's got like <laughs> the, the Optimus Prime voice. The Peter Cullen, I think his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Like I clicked it and I heard that voice and I was like, okay, now this is awesome. <laughs> I find it awesome that NASA actually named an award after Optimus Prime. That I know. is just so geeky. Now, <laughs> it's just awesome. Now, uh, so have any of these others that we're going to be talking about later actually won that award that you know of, or did these kind of predate it? Uh, probably predate it. They, you know, they get mentions and they get, you know, website stuff. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm not sure. I kind of stumbled across the Optimus Prime Award uh, doing this, during the research for this show. Oh, <laughs> Well, I know a lot about spin-off tech because with my company, you know, we do the contracts and you have to fill out, you know, well, what and you, kind of you, technology could you use this for? You and, should actually know a lot about it because we're actually looking at some right now. If I do a close-up on you, you, we can see spin-off tech. see spin-off tech in my eyes. Yeah, contact extended lenses. Wear, not contact lenses, but extended wear. The kind of gas permeable that you can wear for like seven days straight or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the technology for that. The company, you know, had... Uh, was doing research, and they sent some experiments up into space, and they were able to increase the technology and get this gas permeable contacts um, wow. so that they could be have extended wear. So that's one of the type of things that's invented here on space, and then it got an upgrade through uh, research with NASA. That, 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 okay. I want to move on to the next one because this one, I'm getting distracted by myself because the statement yeah. that you put... In our show notes, is yeah. that this was originally developed to detect the birth of stars, okay? <laughs> so you guys watching at home, just imagine some everyday tech you have in your home that could potentially yeah. be used to detect the birth of stars. Do you have an idea? Any guesses? You're wrong. Probably. <laughs> Probably very wrong. Actually, ear thermometers. Yep. Those things that you stick in your ear and they tell you your temperature were originally made to detect well, the birth of stars. The type of technology. Um, it's, it's based on... Our chat room says pregnancy test. Pregnancy test. <laughs> oh. Infrared uh, technology. It, you, know, you know, cameras that you are used to spear, uh, peer into space and look at the amount of infrared energy emitted by something. So, you know, is it a star starting to form? Is it emitting... Uh, how much heat is it emitting? So you can, you know, detect and analyze these star-forming regions. And they're like, hey, wait a minute, we can use that to detect... Point it, okay, so they invent a, a thing that they point at deep space to detect yeah. infrared, and then they decide to point it at our head? <laughs> well, on a different <laughs> scale, then you For can... science! Head, <laughs> and you can see the temperature of something without being in contact with it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that so sounds a little more a benign. I, I accept. <laughs> You're using a camera to be able to detect the temperature of something. Now, on the subject of medical equipment, you've gone in here, yeah. and I don't actually know what this is, but you've given me uh -huh. a, a really creepy pic that I'll show in a minute, but a <laughs> yeah. ventricular assist device. Yeah. First of all, tell me a little bit about this, and then uh, how is this a NASA spinoff, if you don't mind? Yeah, I was trying to look at it. I believe they worked with, um, what it is, is people waiting for a heart transplant. Mm -hmm. This is a, a pump that sort of uh, supercharges their heart. So their heart's still pumping. The muscles are still working. But this is like a separate small pump that fits inside the chest to kind of help things go along. Take, With take, a little little fanny pack down here to, to keep track so that of it gives, all. Well, that gives like a external power and stuff like that. Oh, uh, okay. So I believe it was uh, they worked with a NASA engineer. I believe a NASA engineer either... I had a family member or a friend who was waiting for a heart transplant. knew someone waiting for a heart transplant. So this wasn't like they invented it to go up there just no. in case somebody loses their heart on, in space. It this wasn't is that a, sort of... Yeah, this is a different type of... I just of want to know what kind of contingencies they're planning for here. <laughs> this is the kind of spinoff tech where it's like an engineer that works at NASA sees something and says, hey, wait a minute, I bet, you know, I know that we have these tiny little pumps. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, you know, made them to work you know, in tiny spaces with very little power in space, I bet we can radically change that and talk to a medical person and be able to give some assistance to somebody's heart. That's uh, amazing. But uh, this next one I, I want to talk about is uh, yeah. 
for the gamers out there, I know oh, yeah. plenty of us watch this uh, show. The force feedback joystick yes. is also a form of NASA spinoff. Yep. Of course, NASA didn't involve the joystick itself, but the force feedback. Um, you know, it was part of you know Apollo program and stuff like that, where they're tr- they need. Um, it would be best if the you know they're saying they're moving a joystick. That's really only shooting off you know digital stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you have a little bit of feedback on that, then it gives them a better idea of what the spaceship is doing and they can fly it better. These are po- you know back in the Apollo program. These oh were yeah, pi- I can totally see why they'd want to use this. These I'm are just... test pilots. Yeah, yeah, they're used to having you know some sort of feedback on what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Force feedback, even. Force, yes. So without. Okay. So you're saying that without the space program, we wouldn't probably have rumble pads? I don't know about rumble pads. It's a yeah, I type know. of force feedback, right? Well, now, yeah, I guess so. We have literally like another dozen, maybe more than that links in our show oh, notes yeah. that, that we could talk it's about going forever. all night. Are there any on here that you find particularly interesting that you'd like to bring up here on the show, Mars? Uh, let's see. I mean, there's things that people know about a lot. Uh, cordless tools originally developed for Apollo astronauts. Oh, you yeah. know, they, they needed something that they could carry with them and go out and get uh, samples from the moon. Yeah, including so apparently need... dustbusters. Yeah, well, that's what they say. You know, it's like the dustbuster. You know, <laughs> it's a cordless device. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't have cords hanging all over the place when you're yeah, out Yeah, they don't want to be attached to the, uh, you know, draw power from or be attached to, you know, their lander. They wanted to be able to walk wherever they wanted to walk. And not trip over cords. So those were originally developed by the space program? It wasn't like a, a joint thing yes. with like that Black & Decker or anything like that? Uh, I think, it, yeah, I think it may have been a joint, mm-hmm. but it was. They may have gone out and said, can you work with me? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to look while we talk. <laughs> well, while you try to think of that, and, and feel free to interrupt me, but I want to bring up yeah, a, a couple others because Decker. these these sound really comfy. Um, everybody knows about memory yeah. foam right now. Yep. Uh, apparently that was invented for the space shuttle stuff, and uh, yep. so was Back in the 60s. something called a space blanket. What what is a space blanket? Those space blankets are those um, silvery shiny blankets that fold up into oh, little yeah. uh, little pockets that you put in emergency packs, and you put in you know your car, and then you wrap it around you and it's supposed to keep you super warm right right now and my brother's a big outdoors type he goes uh hiking yeah. all the time and this and you'll take he's always got you. he calls it an emergency blanket I, yeah i didn't know they were called space blankets also well they've they've changed their name over the course and is it because it's such a, a lightweight material is that uh yeah it was lightweight uh metals it was um spray coating metals onto other things so that you could have it thin they actually are metal uh yeah wow or mylar I mean, I'm, I joke about it that it's his tinfoil blanket, but I didn't know it was actually actually metal. Well, I know uh, some of them are. I don't know. Some of them may just be highly reflective, but I think there is some metal component to them. Neat. So anti-icing systems, single crystal solar energy, water purification, pollution yep. rem- remediation. Yep. This is fantastic it stuff. I mean, the, uh, and probably if you go check out some of the other links that, that I mentioned earlier, like that NASA at home, there's probably yeah. some that aren't even in our show notes yet. Oh, yeah. And the the Android app, it it's yep. amazing. And I think just oh, yeah. like just like I mentioned earlier, one of the neatest things about this is that it does really show us how the concept of of funding space yeah. travel and and a space um, program mm-hmm. can really have a, a fundamental improvements on a, on our everyday lives, from oh, edible yeah. toothpaste to contact lenses. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, going into space and you know launching you know astronauts into space and traveling somewhere. It's condensing a whole environment into a big box. It's like, you know, Earth is essentially our spaceship through space. Yeah. You know, it's just on a much bigger scale. So you have to, once you scale everything down, you're like, you know exactly what you have to worry about, you know, and it's a whole system. And it's like, how do we miniaturize everything and make, every, you know, upgrade all this stuff so that we can figure things out? And that brings it back to Earth. And it's like, hey, wait, you know, that, you know, water recycle loop that we have to worry about in space, we can bring that down here, purify water in places that, uh, you know, in remote locations, very, you know, a lot easier with smaller pumps and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Now, also in the chat, uh, in the, um, in the, uh, in the show notes, we've got a few other links. You've got one for the office of the chief technologist, the spinoff yeah. 2010. Is that the winners from that Optimus Prime thing? Uh, it could be this, the winners from the Optimus Prime thing. I think it's more like, uh, some of the top ones for 
2010, they'll pull in and give them their own, mm. you know, page, talk, talk to people about them. There's also some inventions that kids have created for space. That <laughs> probably some of those have earthbound uh, uses as well. That's nah, just their kids' website. Actually, the NASA kids' educational websites are very colorful and imagey. And oh, useful. you know what? This is perfect for Chris. I need to show him this link. There you go. Yeah, lots of pretty pictures. Pictures. Invisible braces. That's the other one that I missed. That, yes. That's like the Invisalign stuff, right? Yeah, the Invisalign stuff. It was, no, again, uh, they probably didn't create that so that the no. astronauts would have straight teeth. No, it was the ceramics that it was made of. The, the material was built for space. The transparent al aluminum or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Star Trek trying reference. They develop new tough materials, um, but they didn't have Scotty, so they had uh, to do with second Transparent class. ceramics, is that what you said? Yeah, it was invisible. It was uh, uh, transparent ceramics, not aluminum, but ceramics. That that sounds like the future to me, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mars, I think that's enough for for our show tonight. I would encourage everybody to check out these awesome show notes. Mars put them together. They've got, like I said, dozens and dozens of links. If you're interested in this, um, feel free to leave a comment wherever you're at. If you feel like we missed anything, over over overlooked anything that you find just fascinating, I'd love to see other people talking about this all the time. Oh, yeah. So, but that's all we've got for tonight's Jupiter at Night. Join us back here tomorrow night. Uh, as we mentioned on the show last night, we have some pretty epic plans for tomorrow, but it involves getting permission to shoot something that we haven't gotten yet. So if we can't do that, we do have a pretty epic backup plan as well. So join us tomorrow for our last show of the week here at 8 p.m. Pacific for Jupiter at Night. Good night, Mars. Good night, Jeremy.